In this video, I want to show you how we can create conditional formatting in a column chart based on the category. Not based on the values that the columns are showing, but based on a category. And so here's our chart here. It shows you an example of what it looks like. I'm going to start by looking at the data that we get from the analysis. So the data from the analysis is here just in these cells from A5 to B9. So it just comes in with our, in this case, departments and values. So one of the things we want to do is we want to add some additional uh, inputs in order to be able to create this chart and make it flexible. So the first is this column for focus. So what you'll notice here is that I've placed a Y in this particular row for department C because that's what I want to be the focus. Now I've done this manually, but you can obviously create a formula, for example, that might reference uh, some other cell somewhere to decide which of these categories should be the focus. The other thing I've done down here is I have typed in a title. This title is going to be automatically put into the chart title so that when the data changes, this title, we type in a new title, the chart automatically updates. So you see how we're building in flexibility into this chart worksheet. A couple of other uh, cells over here. So cell F6 is the maximum value. You can see in the formula bar here, the maximum of all the values. And the reason I'm selecting that and calculating it is because uh, we're going to need to know how big it is in order to size a particular segment that is going to hold the category label that we're putting in. And the size of that segment, I've just typed in 0.15. Uh, this is the label proportion. See, what I'm doing here is I'm building it so that the size of the segment holding the label will be proportional based on the data that we put in. This means that, that if the data is, let's say, 250,000 instead of three to five, we can automatically have the graph update and the chart is relevant based on the data. Again, this is another way we build in flexibility into our chart worksheet. So when we look at our chart data table here, um, our categories are just simply formulas that copy from up here. But then what we've done is for the values, we split them into two, regular values and focus values. The reason we do that is because, uh, and this is a fundamental principle when I build chart worksheets, especially templates like this, is to have each data series only perform one activity, one action, one meaning for each data series. So the regular values, are only the values that are the categories that are not focused on. So when we take a look at the formula here in our formula bar, it says if C6, so this row, the focus column, if it's yes, then we put in not applicable or not available. This is this error value of NA. Why would I put an error value in? Well, because in Excel charts, error values are not charted. And this gives us a lot of flexibility so that we can have for each row, it will only have a value in one of either the regular value or focus value columns. So the rest of the formula, if it is not Y, then we put in B6. And similarly for the focus value, it says if it's Y, then put in B6. If not, put in the NA error value. So you notice each row only has a value in one of the two series. And then we have our label segment series. So the way we're actually creating these focus labels in the chart is that this is not the horizontal axis uh, labels that we normally have. These are actually data labels in invisible segments. So again, invisible segments are another fundamental approach, invisible to position visible. In this case, we're positioning this data here. Department A, Department B, Department C. And by separating it between regular and focus, again, I can do the formatting. So the value here is similarly, we say if C6 is Y, then NA, because this is the regular label segment. And if not, then we have minus one. Now, my, why do I have minus one? Because this column needs to go below the zero so I can position the label down here. Now, this is obviously I'm using an example here where all of the data is positive. If you had some data that's negative, you're going to have to adjust some of these formulas, but the same principle applies. And then it's minus one times 
F7 times F6. So these maximum and the proportional values that we had set. So the proportional value of 0.15, so that's 15%. I, you know, I created that based on my experience and playing around with the data. Most of the time that works. But again, it's one value, so you can simply put it in. If it's not big enough, you change it and all of them update. Similarly with the focus label segment, if it's Y, then we have that value. If it's not, then it's the NA. So again, for each row, we have a value in only one of either the regular label segment or the focus label segment. And then a little set off from the data we're going to use for the chart are these two columns, regular label and focus label. These are the actual labels we're going to use down here in these invisible segments. And what I've done is, uh, it's very simple here, I've created a custom data label. But what I've done in the formula is if C6 is Y, so if it's a focus, because this is the regular label, then we have just a null string. Otherwise, we use the category label for this particular role. And similarly for the focus, same sort of thing. If it's focus, use the category. Now you obviously have an opportunity here to create a formula that might be more customized than just this, but it's a very simple way. But again, we're creating these labels so that we have the customization and we have a label only in either regular or focus. So the whole idea of separating so that we have different data series with different meanings really drives a lot of what we're doing here. So when we create our chart, when we take a look at our chart, we have our regular value and that's set to the muted gray color. So it has muted gray fill, the labels are muted gray, and they are not the focus. The focus is in the bright orange with the label. Now, one of the things to note here, I'm just going to press control one so you can see the data series here. Here's the thing that we did is I set the series overlap to 100%. This is a regular clustered column chart. So typically you would have four columns side by side, but by setting the overlap to 100%, they are on top of each other. Now it's not really covering anything up because there's only one of the column going up and column going down for any of these particular departments or categories. So it's not that we're covering anything up. We're just using this idea of uh, having multiple different columns laying on top of each other. Down below, we have our series for the segment here that holds the data label. And similarly, down here, the data labels. So when we look at the data labels, though, if I'm going, if those are the series, so if I select the data labels themselves and I take a look at the label options, you'll notice it says here, label contains value from cells. And this is, again, Another great technique within Excel charting is that you can select the range. So you'll notice it's, I've selected this. I want the labels to come from these cells here. So whatever's in these cells is used as labels. This allows us and gives us that customization ability of what the labels are going to look like. A couple of other items to note in the formatting. You'll notice that what I've done is uh, on the uh, horizontal axis, I have the horizontal axis, so I have it there. But what I've done is I have, if I go to more options and I go to my uh, horizontal axis, so again, if you can't select it, you can always go here to the drop down list on the chart format ribbon. So if I select it, You'll notice what I've done here on my labels is I've said label position none. So it does not have any labels by default on the horizontal axis. I've added them by using those label segments that drop below the zero. Now the other thing on the axis is that the vertical axis should have negative numbers here because we have negative values in our data. So where did they go? How did I get rid of them? Well, what I did was I used a custom number format. So the, you see the custom number format here is it has the standard numbers and, and comma and zeros. Then there are two semicolons. So the middle semicolon, in between the two semicolons would be the formatting for a negative number. So the, it's what's a positive number formatted like, semicolon, negative number, semicolon, and then zero. So what I've done here is, is by having no formatting for negative numbers, it does not display negative numbers. It displays zeros, it displays positive numbers, 
but it does not display negative numbers. And so that's a way that we can uh, control some of that additional formatting. I've also removed the legend and the grid lines because we don't need those on our chart. So I have created a chart that has these columns overlapping each other. I've set the formatting for each of them separately so that we have conditional formatting. Conditional formatting that we can control or we can control by a particular formula. So just to show you how this can change, get rid of the... So if I decided, well, Department A is focused as well, I put the Y in there, and you notice the chart automatically changes. So I'll undo that. Let's say the data is much larger. So instead of you know 3.4, we have 234,500. You'll notice that the scale automatically changed. The space down at the bottom automatically increased because we're driving it again from the data. So it's all driven, I'll undo that, all driven by the data. This gives you a conditional formatting chart that's conditional based on the category, not on the values, and it gives you flexibility. So you can change the data, you can update the data very easily in the chart updates. Also, when you want to reuse it for another set of data, you know the chart's going to automatically update. And the last thing that updates is, of course, the chart title. So when we take a look at the chart title, you notice it is a formula. So when we went to the chart title, we clicked in equals, and then we clicked on this cell here, B11. And so it puts in the sheet name and uh, the dollar signs with B11. So it's always that cell. So if this particular cell changes, the text changes here, we type in something else. So instead of last quarter, last month, it automatically changes in the chart. So all you're doing is you're updating the data, you're up selecting the focus if it's not done by a formula, updating the title, and everything else in the chart updates. So that's how you can create a column chart that has conditional formatting based on the category, not the values. If you found this video helpful, there are three things you can do to help me out. First, click the like button below the video on YouTube. Second, leave a comment with any questions or feedback. And third, subscribe to my channel. Check out my websites and other videos with more tips and advice. Thanks again for watching.